What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are reviewing the brand new Peter Schrager Mock Draft 1.0. Now a lot of y'all have already seen this on Twitter and a lot of y'all have been going crazy about it but Peter is just reporting what he's hearing and I have a lot of respect for Peter Schrager. Also I actually looked back on his draft 3.0 the day before the uh, before the actual draft or the day of the actual draft and it was pretty spot on, especially if you're counting in the first two rounds. So he's just reporting what he's hearing. And it's not like he dove in and did all the tape studies and did this. So give him a little bit of slack. He's trying to give us a unique perspective. And we are continuing this for another round because that's what we do here. Let's start this off with the number one overall selection. It's Bryce. There you go. Yeah, I think that's going to be the right move. Uh, Colts move up with the Texans. So in division trade, kind of weird. If you break down what this trade was, it was DeForest Buckner to go back with D'Amico Ryans as well as that number four overall pick. So technically, Houston's not gaining draft capital, but Houston already has a significant amount of it, especially over the years because of the Deshaun Watson trade. But when you do look at this, the Colts move up for a star QB. I don't know if I would want to enable my own in-division rival to get CJ, but if you do look at the betting odds now for the Texans pick, it's Will Anderson 1, Will Levis 2. So if that is the case, they're essentially enabling a team to move up and select a quarterback that they would not select themselves. So I think that would be a perfectly fine idea. And yeah, my opinion's like, it's weird because you are, again, enabling a team in your own division to get a QB. But if you have no faith in them, or maybe little faith, especially at number two overall, and you get to get a star player on your defensive front, you very well might be making the correct move. So uh, I think this trade makes sense for both sides if you're taking it from that perspective. And I do love the idea. I haven't even thought of a DeForest Buckner trade because, I mean, we have heard about that type of rumor before and haven't really put the pieces together. I don't know if the Colts want to, you know, see uh, DeForest Buckner two times a year, but at the same time, you have to weigh the value of a quarterback. And at this point, it looks like they thought the price was willing. They were willing to pay the price. So uh, number three, the Cardinals stay and get Will Anderson. Uh, yeah, I just don't know if a team's going to be that enthused to move up for Anthony Richardson because he's probably not going to be that day one dude. I love Anthony Richardson. You guys see my board right below my face. It is a unique board. Yes, I get it. These mock drafts are all unique too because everybody has a unique board. So um, we all understand that, you know, we take a, I take a risk every time I put my board under my face, but I like to have some transparency with you guys so that I don't have to explain my board every single time I talk to you guys. And it's just an easier way for you guys to get to see what my opinions are because I put a lot of time into this and you guys deserve to at least have easy access to it. But yeah, Cardinals going Will Anderson, if they stay in the spot, I think that's a great move. Would not be too surprised if Tyree Wilson were the pick, but I mean, I prefer, like y'all y'all see this, I, I prefer Will Anderson here. Uh, Texans going Tyree Wilson. So you move back, you get DeForest Buckner and Tyree Wilson. If you're going to be going after a defensive player, I mean, I would love D'Amico Ryans to, get his, to be able to mold a star player like Tyree Wilson. He has so far looked like he has great work ethic. The only reason he hasn't performed in the offseason is because that damn foot. So, you know, good in terms of the personality check. Crazy physical build. So that's also worth molding. And then really good against the run. So you have a guy who can be a day one impact for you. And then you add to that fact that he's had 50 pressures last year. Granted, it was, I believe, in the Big 12. But, you know, you're still seeing that production, even though he is raw as a pass rusher. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I personally think that this might be the best situation for the Texans if they move out of pick number two, because you still get a really, really good player. Um, but you also get to add another star at the same time. And you do, I believe, have the cap space to be able to handle that. Uh, Seahawks then going Anthony Richardson. I've been hearing a ton of this talk. I have my uh, my buddy, you know, Theo Ash came on, said he's been hearing a lot of rumors about Houston Texans and Will Levis. And Seahawks and Anthony Richardson, lo and behold, it looks like those rumors are correct. Now, again, are all these rumors logical? No, but teams are not logical. We all know that. And uh, I think this would be a smart move. This is a logical move myself uh, with the way I think about it, but maybe not for the Houston Texans. But we'll get to that in soon, uh, soon enough. But Anthony Richardson needs a year to rest. And Geno's pretty much on a one-year contract if you look at how it's broken down. So 
Uh, I think this is a very, very realistic move. You're going to be hard-pressed to find the Seahawks being able to grab a top-end talent in the draft because they have a very solid team for the time being. Uh, Detroit Lions at number six going Jalen Carter. I just have a hard time believing that Dan Campbell is going to go after someone with potential off the field concerns. Like, I feel like he's someone who believes if you have the work mentality, I'm able to mold you into the player versus you have the talent. And I'm going to mold you into the uh, work ethic because you can't teach work ethic. But if they do this, I think it's incredible. Obviously, the talent is out of this world. And him, Aiden Hutchinson, Ali McNeil, you know, Josh Pascoe coming into his own, James Houston. That's a freakish front. No one's going to decline that at all. It's just, does Dan Campbell, like, is he looking for someone who has a blue chip mentality or just blue chip talent? And that's going to be really what decides this pick on um, on draft day. So I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I think it's a great move if it happens. I just do have my concerns. But, you know, is the risk reward worth it? I think so. But again, that's I try to predict what really happens in the draft. Uh, Vegas Raiders going at Peter Skoronsky here. You know, I think going O-line is never a bad move for them. I'd prefer going corner because I think there's just four top end immediate starters. But you can't go wrong with somebody who I have above all the corners except for Joey Porter Jr. But y'all know I have a man crush on that dude. But Peter Skaronski is going to be a bona fide starter for many years to come. Could eventually transition to that right tackle spot. I would love to see him in a guard role until he gets comfortable there. And that's exactly what you can do. So I think this is a perfectly fine selection. Yeah, I know that there might be more picks that you guys enjoy. But I think that what this telegraphs is that Peter is hearing that they're going to be going offensive line with probably one of their first two picks, which... I think we've all been kind of accustomed to doing. So this could end up being a different selection, but we know at least that they are looking on the offensive line. Uh, Nolan Smith to the Falcons. It's between him and LVN at this point, apparently. And um, that's perfectly fine. You know, that's totally logical. You're following the betting odds there as well as the insider information. I love Nolan Smith. And based on the fact that they've gotten Clayus Campbell and Bud Dupree in this offseason, two dudes who are much larger, they could be saying, hey, we want Nolan Smith to be that Sam linebacker who's going to be rushing most of the time. And I don't know if I fully love that idea, but at the same time, you, he's an amazing talent. I love him to death. I'm not going to complain about it too much. Uh, Bears going Christian Gonzalez over an offensive lineman. I think this would be a very intriguing move, but I do think that, you know, I've been taking corner to them in round number two. This at least telegraphs that they're looking in the DB room. Christian Gonzalez would be a day one starter. I don't know if they need to have a true corner one, though. I think Jalen Johnson is a very, very talented player, and you could get somebody in round number two that you could end up having as your corner number two and be very, very solid. So again, I think it's telegraphing that they are looking at the DBs, and I think that shows that they're going to be going after one. I just don't think it's going to be at nine because it's offensive line classes then, but I digress. Eagles and going Bijan. I mean, Bijan is a special case. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been saying Peter Skaronsky is probably going to be this pick at this point because the fact they brought in three offensive tackles that should be going well before pick 30 as their top 30 visits, which means that they're definitely looking at offensive line. Uh, but Bijan was one of those dudes in the top 30 visits. Heavily heavily, heavily favored um, compared to all other running backs to go to the Eagles at this point, if I'm not mistaken, based on the betting odds. But I think that this would be a very good pick. It's a needle mover. It's not a Howie move, but it's a needle mover. And uh, I think that's you're going to be your greatest wins above replacement pick at number 10. This is the one that's very intriguing. Titans going hand and hooker. I feel like this could be true for round number two and then moving up maybe to number 30. If the Eagles want to get ballsy with it, I mean, they've been in talks with Kevin Byard. Actually, I'm in a mock draft on Friday with 32 other people, or 31. Yeah, so it's a seven-round mock draft that we're doing and walk the mock. And I actually did talk to one of the Eagles guys. I was like saying, hey, what about Kevin Byard in a second and maybe like a fifth-round pick in order to move up to pick number 30? I think that is something that very well could happen. And if the money is negotiated out, that's something that could be a Titans selection. They get that fifth year contract and um, Hendon Hooker is going to be a day one type of dude. Obviously, he's there in Tennessee. They've had their eyes on him. So it could certainly be a move. I think if you stick at 11 and go QB, you go Will Levis. But I think this is showing that the Titans are looking at quarterback and Hendon Hooker might be a move that they want to do for a late first. 
And uh, I think that could happen in the real draft. Then Texans going Will Levis, who is their number two. So you get Tyree Wilson, Will Levis as well as uh, DeForest Buckner. And to me, if I just saw that, I'd be like, wow, so they got, you know, Will Levis first and then like Tyree Wilson slipped and they got DeForest Buckner. That's great. So I'm not really going to focus on where they got drafted. But if that happened, I'd be perfectly fine because it's pick 12. You know, you could definitely send that pick in. So I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, the New York Jets going Broderick Jones. I think that's a solid move. I'd prefer multiple tackles over him, but I'm not going to complain. You're going offensive line. I'm not going to complain ever about a team going O-line. Uh, New England Patriots going Devon Witherspoon. It fits hand in glove. I think that Devon is a perfect Patriot, but it's hard to think that he'd ever get here. But he is 5'10 and 180. Could definitely happen. We'll see about that. Packers going Jackson, Smith, and Jigba. I'm so excited if they actually do do this. So in the last mock um, that he, Peter Schrager did for 2022, he actually traded up with the Packers, I believe maybe to pick 15 or 14 with the Ravens, and he selected a wide receiver. The Packers didn't do that in the first, but they traded up to the beginning of the second round with, I believe, the Vikings. Um, but they traded up, bottom line. They traded up to the beginning of the second round, and then they selected Christian Watson. So they are looking at wide receiver, and that is a very, very good idea for them to do that because I think they could definitely use a number two. And Jackson Smith and Jigba could be the selection. It could be the way of saying, hey, this is the perfect complement to Christian Watson. And, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, very talented player. He just especially um, with that combination with him and Christian Watson, I would love that. Commander's going Don Kincaid. You know, I'd prefer if they went after the local talent in Deontay Banks, but Don Kincaid is a top tier tight end. He's the number one for me in the class. And I think the commanders definitely should be looking at a tight end. So if they go one in round one, I might be a little butthurt that they didn't go after a star cornerback like Banks, but I'm not going to tear them too much of a new one. So that is a okay. Steelers then going Paris Johnson. Oh, I know Joey Porter's next. I, I, I think this is perfectly fine. Uh, Paris Johnson's a great player. And this is great value. If I'm losing on Joey Porter Jr., at least it's going to be to a very, very high upside offensive lineman. So I, I'm i fine with it. It just hurts because I love Joey Porter Jr. so much. Y'all see it. I'll scroll down a little bit more so you guys get to see a little more of my board. Uh, JPJ to the Lions, if you get that, that's going to be an A++ draft, which, you know, I do believe the Lions could pull off. Uh, Lions could be a Super Bowl contender, especially if they pull off this type of draft. Buccaneers going Deontay Banks. I don't think that's out of the question either. Lucas Van Ness to the Seahawks. It doesn't seem out of the equation either. You know, I do think that they could be looking for more of that run stuffing um, edge rusher. And it could certainly be Lucas Van Ness. And at 20, you know, he is moldable. It's where you can take a shot on someone like that. I'd prefer Miles Murphy. But I know a lot of people are right now preferring Lucas Van Ness. So it, it is possible for sure uh chargers going michael mayer and your oc is like he's has a fetish for tight ends and y'all don't really exactly have one so uh, if kellen moore gets his hands on michael mayer i think that that would be a pretty solid addition and he could kind of be that dalton schultz uh there in that offense especially for justin herbert giving him a very reliable option ravens then going darnell Wright. y'all know he's my ot number one in the class because peter scronzi is listed as an o lineman but this is intriguing. There's been a lot of issues with Ronnie Stanley in terms of his health. They have drafted future options like Daniel Failele. I don't think this is out of the possibilities. And this is a weird spot because the top four corners are gone. I think that's your biggest area of improvement. I think Miles Murphy could be a good addition if you lost Calais Campbell. But we do see these larger interior defensive linemen slash edge rushers like Keon White, who could be that second round or the I mean, if the Ravens do move back, could be that type of second round selection, early third if they get one of those picks. So keep your eye out for that because I think that would be a really intriguing idea. Or in the third round, they could end up getting someone like Carl Brooks to replace um, that Clayus Campbell mold because I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility. Darnell Wright's an amazing tackle and he's going to be going in for a spot that sometimes is open because of injury. So keep your eyes open on that. Uh, Vikings and going Jordan Addison, I think another wide receiver, perfectly fine. I do think that there have been rumors that Hedden Hooker is going to be this pick. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars then going Brian Branch. It's a perfect pick. That would be like a dream scenario. And I do think it is possible. So good for them. 
Uh, Giants going Zay Flowers. I think that's perfectly fine as well. I I pretty much probably take Jordan Addison here, but that's because, you know, Jordan Addison's already gone. Um, right? I'm pretty sure he's already gone. He's probably not. I just probably spoke out of my rear. But I usually go um, Jordan Addison because Zay Flowers is already gone. But I think this is a great move. Great move for him. Dallas Cowboys going Jameer Gibbs. Uh, I think that's perfectly fine. I think that's perfectly fine. You have, I mean, your offense was so explosive with Tony Pollard. I prefer other positions, but you are looking at a running back. I think it might be Zach Charbonnet round number two, but I think this does show they are solidified on going after a running back, and I'm going to trust the Peter Schrager insight, but Jameer Gibbs would not be an awful selection, and we could see running backs get pushed up the boards, and Tony Pollard was a big, big addition, or was a big piece of this offense, and you lost another piece of your offense in that running back room, so I would not be too surprised to see them go after a cheaper, more long-term option. I like corners, maybe developmental ones. I like going offensive line here. I like potentially even going defensive line here. But you can't agree, you can't disagree that running back is not on their priority list. So uh, if they choose to go it in round one, they do it. Uh, Bills and going Miles Murphy, which, I mean, obviously, if he's there for the Cowboys, I probably would have selected that or offensive lineman for him. Uh, Bills going Miles Murphy, if he's there, I think that they also, basically the odds of him being there at pick number 28, I just saw a tweet about this, uh, jumped up. So he looks like he's starting to fall on some people's boards, which I think would be a shame. But you know what? Whoever gets him is going to get a star player. And lo and behold, the Bills are going to continue having a very solid defensive front. Very good as a run defender. Very smart, uh, developing as a pass rusher. And he's shown time and time again, he has that power and he has that ability He's my number four player in the class, and that is, I mean, especially if he goes here, I think he'll end up blooming into that type of prospect. Uh, Darnell Washington for the Bengals, three tight ends in the first round. We've heard about it. I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility. Not the pick I would go with, but again, not out of the realm of possibility. Pick number 29, the Saints going Jonathan Mingo. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh my goodness, Mingo above Quentin Johnston. Of course, I think they'd probably go Quentin Johnston in this case, but I do think Mingo might be shoved into that second round position. I don't think for late first is where he would go. He was not really dominant there at Ole Miss. Like I just didn't really think he was that great. He's a fun player and he's someone who should be considered for sure in that day two range. I I mean, if anyone's going to do it, it's probably going to be New Orleans, to be fair. If we are going to be honest, it does feel like New Orleans would do that. But Jonathan Mingo is a really fun option. He'd be a good addition to the Saints. I obviously would just not do it in the first. Uh, Eagles going Will McDonald. You know, it kind of feels like your on-sale version of Nolan Smith. So I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility either. And that she's going a wide receiver. It kind of replaces exactly where Juju Smith-Schuster was. So let's jump right into the mock draft. Okay, so at 32, the Steelers, we've grafted Paris Johnson, which is awesome. Obviously, I love the fact that Anton Harrison's here. I think that would be a really cool ability to get, you know, Joey Porter Jr. at 17, Anton Harrison here. But I'm not going to complain about Parents Johnson. I think that's a perfectly fine alternative. Um, you could, I mean, we could just go tackle, tackle right now and get, you know, Ohio State teammates. That'd be pretty entertaining. Uh, but I'm not going to be that crazy. I think it would still be fun, but I'm not going to be that crazy. I do think since the Steelers are looking to potentially move up for Jalen Carter, they might be open to Brian Breezy early round two. We have Larry Ogunjobi on a three-year deal. DeMarvin Leal, man, I just wish he stuck it at a lower weight as an edge rusher. He was so dominant at his size, and you never know. He might be able to transition over there, but Hayward doesn't have too long, and Larry Ogunjobi is an interior defensive lineman too. I don't think Brian Breezy's out of the equation here. Kalijah's fun. I don't think that's a bad choice either. And ultimately, there are a lot of really good options at this point. That's the great thing is that we actually, based if the draft falls this way, which again, we've already addressed um, that I think maybe some of these are more rumors for round two. But if the draft does fall this way, we have excellent choices. And I don't think you can go wrong. For me, I'm going to be going after a linebacker in Jack Campbell here. I don't think he, I don't think he'll escape the first round. I don't know. The Bills, if Miles Murphy is there, maybe that's a different story. But we are still looking for that star linebacker since Ryan Shazier. Cole Holcomb's an amazing linebacker too. I am I am just not a huge fan of Nicholas Morrow being a starting caliber linebacker. And us Steelers fans, we understand that 
Uh, linebacker used to be a focal point of our team, and it's been pretty brutal since. And we've taken swings at guys like Miles Jack, obviously we moved up for Devin Bush, and now I think it's time to get it right. 465 speed isn't the most amazing in the world, but for his size at 250 pounds, that's perfectly fine. And every other movement statistic is incredible for him, especially at his size. He had something in the nines for the RAS score. I think it was like a 9-9. Nine, nine. And again, 250 pounds, 6 foot 5. That is awesome. Pick number 33 for the Texans. Tyree Wilson, Will Levis, and DeForest Buckner. So, kind of sucks because, you know, you got two really good interior defensive linemen here. But you could look at Anton Harrison being a future uh, replacement for Titus Howard. He did play a game at right tackle this past year. Again, defensive tier, not really a need. Could go for that Dewan Jones train that I have done before. Um, but I honestly could be intrigued with Audible Ware. Already got two defensive linemen, though. There's so many things that this team needs, and uh, we've already, like, based on what Peter has suggested, we've already addressed a lot of them. And I know linebacker's not the biggest issue, but I think it's a super thin class, and I do trust D'Amico. We were talking about how he had comfortability with DeForest Buckner. I think he also has comfortability with a really good linebacking core, and you have already a very solid one in Christian Harris who's developing. I mean, in that game versus Dallas, he dropped into coverage and was able to make a very athletic move to make a pass deflection. To me, I think Trenton Simpson's going to be just on that train too, and there is a solidified top four. I'm going to give Diane Henley the benefit of the doubt. I'm a bit lower on him than most, but you know that, I mean, the tape's not done watched on uh, Diane Henley. There's still plenty more to watch for him. So I'm going to go after Trenton Simpson here. He just tested out phenomenally and, you know, maybe he might have that Christian Harris fall, but I do think that, you know, it's a position worth grabbing, especially since we've been continuing to address all these defensive spots. Corner's another one. I do think that could be a good option for you guys, but um, just continuing to revamp that defense, I think that's the right way to go. And I don't really see any receivers worth taking at the moment. So I think it's the right thing to do. Pick number 34, we got Will Anderson for the Cardinals at pick number three. I still think you can go Brian Breezy here or Kalijah Cansey. I don't think that defense is done building yet on that defensive line. Uh, corner is another really good option. Emmanuel Forbes has, I think, a 50% chance to be there at pick number 28 based on um, ESPN analytics. So that could be a good choice. And Mozzie Smith's another really fun option here, but you can't really go wrong. And I think this team is willing to take a swing on somebody who's high ceiling. So I'm going to go with Brian Breezy here. I know we need center, but you can also sign those to be fair. I just don't want to take a center every single time. I do it all the time for you guys, and I want to change things up a little bit. So going after a really high ceiling player at a position of need is a very good choice there at 34. Again, I know we could always go after center, but it's also a lower value position, and I do it all the damn time. So let's add a little bit of excitement here. Pick number 34, Brian Breezy. Pick 35, I might go Kalijah Kansi here. We just lost out on DeForest Buckner. I mean, hell, we might still want some extra penetration on that front. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's change it up. I always go corner or offensive lineman for you guys. We're having fun time going after some new positions. The Rams O-line is, you know, I'm going to go Anton Harrison 10 out of 10 times if he's on the board. Pick number 37 for the Seahawks. Uh, Mozzie Smith's not a bad option. You went AR as well as Lucas Van Ness. I'm going to go Mozzie Smith to plug that interior. You guys lost Al Woods in the offseason. I think that'd be an excellent choice. Pick 38, Peter Skaronsky was the round one selection. Emmanuel Forbes, I mean, he's not too much smaller than, uh, he's 10 pounds smaller. That's pretty significant. And he's three inches taller than Devon Witherspoon. So I can't really be saying too much about that. But Tyreek Stevenson, to me, might be the best choice at this spot. You do need a boundary defensive back. And Tyreek Stevenson has all the workings of a star DB if you give him time to develop which I think this team has some time to develop their DBs. Pick number 39, Emmanuel Forbes is still on the board. That's ridiculous to me. Um, same thing with Dewan Jones. I could have taken him there for the Raiders, but hard to think they'd go tackle, tackle. Um, shoot. Again, this is a team I don't think needs that much. Josh Downs might be the dude who I'm super hyped up about for this team because you just do get a really elusive, very great route running wide receiver. He is a little bit on the lighter side, to be fair. But also, um, he had no top 30 visits from the time that I last checked. Could definitely be a move that we go. Uh, and, you know, 
it would be weird to see him fall to like the third, but I can't pass on BJ Ojolari or Ada Bawari. I know you're going to a 3-4, so actually I might go Ade because you also can use him on the outside at that 4-4-9 speed, but you always have a role for him no matter what. So I think that you value that. Uh, he could end up going way higher than this. Like um, maybe if I were to like force him somewhere, you could technically take him here to the Colts because you always kick him out to edge too. But regardless, pick number 40, speaking of a team that'd be great for Audible Ware, we have the Saints. And um, it's tough to pass on BJ Ojolari here. I don't think I'm going to. I think BJ Ojolari is just the best selection for this team based on the guys who are left on the board. Um, I think we're going to do it. Yeah, let's go BJ Ojolari. I like it. He's also, you know, you got Louisiana connection right there. And people are taking him in the first round. He is a top 10 player to me. I do really love what he's done. And maybe he's not top 10 based on his initial play right now, but he's made big leaps every single year that I've watched him. And to me, that's very important. And I love Aziz Ojolari, so I might be a little bit biased. Anyways, we have the Titans here at 41. Um, they went after Hendon Hooker in the first, which I think in reality, this could be the Hendon Hooker trade or a Hendon Hooker pick. I'm going to go Dewan Jones. Yeah, we're going to kick Nicholas Petit Ferrer back to left tackle, and we're going to have Dewan Jones go to right tackle. We're pairing him back up. I think that's pretty damn awesome, if I will say so myself. The Jets, uh, let's let's just do the trade. We'll do it. Aaron Rodgers, uh, some people think he might even retire. Okay, we're not trading Green Bay's pick. We'll just say a future seventh for this one because I'm not in the mood to do the clickety-click, but we'll just say it could be a future second as well. Anyways, they get pick number 42. It's not going to affect the mock draft if I do any other picks. So I think edge rusher at this point is an excellent move. Felix, I knew DK Uzama is kind of hard to pass on. And you could go Keon White here. Similar uh, physical profile, so to speak, for Rashawn Gary. But I don't really like that myself. I'm going to go Felix, I knew DK Uzama. He is getting that type of hype. He does deserve it as well. Uh, pick number 43 for the Jets. Uh, linebacker is one that I love to go after. We went after an offensive tackle, Broderick Jones, in the first. I have heard that they are potentially looking. They actually made an offer on um, the defensive interior from the Philadelphia Eagles, Fletcher Cox. So I do think it is out there for them to go defensive interior. And so I'm going to change it up and go after one in Keanu Benton, who I absolutely adore. Pick number 44, Nolan Smith, was added to the Falcons. Now... You got the edge rusher down. Wide receiver, you still could go after. I heard that you guys aren't really looking that high for a wide receiver, but Josh Downs would be an awesome addition there with Drake London. Kind of be his Almond Ross St. Brown, so to speak. And you know what? I don't care what the reports are saying. We're going to go after Josh Downs. I think that'd be really cool. You know, you are, you've already seen that type of chemistry work at USC. Now you're going to see it work here in Atlanta. So at pick number 45, Felix on DK Uzama, as well as Jackson Smith and Jigba have been the selections. Osiris Torrance still falling is ridiculous, but you know, it is, it's the draft. Good players fall. I think Sam Laporta might be the best choice here. It'd be weird to see them go offense twice in like the top three selections, but you never know. This is a new era and I really like Sam Laporta overall. Pick number 46. Dude, Emmanuel Forbes is still here. Uh, they got Devon Witherspoon. Man, that is gutting me. It is gutting me. I can't fathom him falling. Um, but it's going to continue happening. I can see Julius Brents, but I kind of want more man to man. I'm going to go after a Drew Sanders pick here, who is awesome. I love him. He is former Bama as well. So Saban, former Saban connection right there. Edge rusher in college, one year at linebacker since, well, he was the linebacker in high school. But transitioned back to linebacker this past year and I think he is absolutely phenomenal uh pick 47 y'all know exactly where I'm probably gonna opt for this one. Oh, Diane Henley but I can't give up on Emmanuel Forbes he deserves to be picked man he is so cool he's such a beast does not deserve to be at the spot but good players fall in the draft so you guys are gonna have um your pick of the letter pick number 48 Diane Henley's here. I know Osiris Torrance would be an awesome selection because you can develop him for a year. But I also know there's better, or not better, but there's still going to be offensive line talent at that next selection. Diane Henley is going to be the pick for me because there isn't a linebacker at that next selection. 
nor will there probably be at that third round either. And Dian is a very solid linebacker. Pick number 49, Osiris Torrance is still on the damn board. So we've gone Paris Johnson as well as Jack Campbell, kind of a dream draft for me. I would have loved Emmanuel Forbes, but Julius Brantz is sitting here. It's kind of hard to pass on him. But I do think someone who will be going in this range, if not higher, is Keely Ringo. And it's tough to say because there's some really good corners in this class. But you can't really teach 6'2 at a, like his 4'3 speed. And he could end up being a safety, which that role is open. Pick number 50. We have the Tennessee. Why the hell did I say that? Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I saw the T in my head and I went straight for Tennessee. So Tampa Bay. Uh, first round, what did we get? I'm tripping. Deontay Banks, this is Osiris Torrance all day. I ain't, I ain't playing anymore. Uh, I don't even care who's at that guard spot, but I was pretty sure uh, Shaq Mason was there last year, and now you're going to have Osiris Torrance fill in the role because he's traded to the Texans. Pick number 51. Damn, there's still good players on the board. Um, I would love for an offensive tackle to have been on the board. There's Cody Malk here, which could be a fun one. Uh, Wanya Morris is someone who I could see being reached for at this point. He's a solid offensive tackle, and this team is still looking for their future at right tackle. Could be that type of reach pick if we're going to try to be realistic here. But I'm going to try to look for some other positions. They did just bring in Chosen Anderson as well. I love Luke Musgrave to this team. I think tight end is going to be something that's so heavily used in a Shanahan system. If you do pass on him, you guys are absolutely going to go Zach Koontz or Josh Wiley. I think that would be something you have to do um, because I love both of those guys too. But Luke Musgrave going to be the selection. Pick number 52. I know the freaking Seahawks fans were gutted that I didn't go Cyrus Torrance. I always do for you guys anyway, so uh, I would say get over it. But Steve Avila is here. So Lucas Van Ness, Anthony Richardson, uh, Mozzie Smith, and Steve Avila. Some pretty beastly dudes on your squad. Some monsters that you are adding. Pick number 53. So the Bears went a corner in round number one. Uh, Cody Malk could be that addition that you are looking for. Wanya Morris, another guy. It's another spot where a right tackle could push up the value of Wanya Morris. And it might be the selection I make, but that defensive line is too great. It's not looking too great. So, I mean, man, it's tough. There's not really a guy here I'm super hyped up about. Um, I'll scroll down the board as well so you guys get to see a little bit more of my selections here. Like, it's tough. I love Isaiah McGuire. I'll probably select him maybe for our second pick, but I mean, I don't think Tuli Tupelo 2 is going to get that type of hype. I really don't. Um, other selections, I mean, you already went a corner, man. I mean, I think the best value here is going to go after someone like Cody Malk, who could be a tackle, could be a guard, really good on the move. So we're going to go after Cody Malk. I just think the value is perfect for him. Pick number 54, tight end with Michael Mayer in round number one. Tank Dell in round number two. Could go safety here with Sidney Brown as well. I think that'd be excellent, but I think they're going to be really offensive focused. And Tank Dell, his separation ability is ridiculous. Pick number 55. We've already gotten a linebacker, already gotten a defensive interior. And um, I'm forgetting what that second first round pick was. Uh, Joey, oh my lord. So, um, yes, yes, we are winning. I think you could go Sidney Brown at this spot. I'm not saying it's an instant impact, but you already have his buddy from Illinois and Kirby Joseph there as well. You could end up going Devon Witherspoon, uh, Sidney Brown, and then have Kirby Joseph there have a whole ass Illinois backfield. But I think he could be the longer term option for where Chauncey Gardner Johnson's going to play. And he, I think he might need one year of development. Other positions I could target is a wide receiver one, but it's like not, I'm not ready for Michael Wilson yet. Just too many injuries. That's it. That's my issue with him. It's just too many injuries. And in the cold, when you're playing in Lambeau in December and it's ice cold, I just don't know if the fragility is going to come out. It could be a move. Um, I think that you might see, honestly, I would be willing to trade like for DeAndre Hopkins, if I am the um, the Detroit Lions, I would probably try to you know put maybe a fourth round pick and see if that works. I know they're looking for a second, but I ain't, I ain't trading this pick for DeAndre Hopkins. I'm going to go after the 
I'm going to go after Sidney Brown route. He's a top 32 player for me. I really love Sidney and you do have that instant chemistry and a longer term option rather than a one year $8 million deal for a slot safety. Pick number 56. I mean, I know that they already got Brian Branch, but this would have been a great second choice. So I think going off, uh, going for offensive line, great move because you're moving Walker Little probably to right tackle. Could again be a Wanya Morris pick if you don't want to do that. I'm going to go Joe Tittman here and I'm going to move him to guard. I love his athleticism. You have Luke Fortner there. I'm not going to give up on him just yet. So I think that's a good move for the team. Uh, New York went after a wide receiver, and I believe Zay Flowers in the first round. Double checking, and that is true. I'm going to go Luke Whippler here to add some extra offensive line presence. You're going all in on the offense this year. Pick number 58, Jameer Gibbs was that round one selection. Julius Brents would be a good understudy for a year, and I do think that is a potential likely option. John Michael Schmitz is here as well. I think getting some interior offensive line help is never a bad thing. We're going to go John Michael Schmitz to play him at guard or center, wherever he's going to fit. Uh, we're having three centers go in a row, so if you didn't like the fact that I went Luke Whippler over John Michael Schmitz, flip him. Go at me. Can like Just come at me, man. Uh, I, I'm perfectly fine with that. John Michael Schmitz could be a really nice addition there. A lot of offensive line injuries happen anyway, and you are looking to move Tyler Smith out of guard to full-time tackle uh, for the rest of his career, so I don't really want him ever playing another snap at guard, even though I did know he played a lot of left tackle last year. I just want him to stay that way. Pick number 59 for the Bills uh, went after a edge rusher in the first, and now I'm going to see if there's any more offensive linemen worth taking because my memory is failing me, and Wanya Morris again could be being pushed up into here. A lot of people like Matt Bergeron, and he's from New York, and I think you could kick him to guard if he ends up not playing well. So I'm going to go after Matt Bergeron. You have that instant connection right there from New York, staying in New York. Pick number 60, uh, tight end Darnell Washington was that first round selection, and Julius Brents will be the second. I don't think I need to explain myself there. Pick number 61, we need to build that um, that defensive front. You know, Cam Smith's still on the board, but I don't think that's out of the question. You know, it's possible. These DBs can go in a crazy amount of orders. So uh, we're going to go Isaiah McGuire here, who, again, I think you're going to look at the tape and then see, okay, well, Broderick Jones, who was picked at 13, got absolutely eaten alive by this man. So even though he had a really bad offseason, uh, he still is worth considering there at 61. Pick number 62, Cam Smith is an option for me. Uh, so far, he's gone Bijan as well as, uh, what did we do? Uh, Will McDonald. So I think Cam Smith would be fine because you can use him as a potential future safety there, but also could be a developmental corner. Got the running back in. Uh, offensive line, we've kind of already just depleted everything, including Matt Bergeron in that group. So uh, Cam Smith's going to be the pick. Yeah, he's going to be one of those guys who have been hinted by even like Mike Renner to be one of those safety converts and do not do this to me. Not now. Um, praying to God that it does work, but let's just discuss. It's one more pick to go. The Kansas City Chiefs. So, oh, there we go. Perfect timing. So KC ended up getting Quentin Johnston at the end of the first round. I think Thule could be a good addition here right now. He has been listed up to 290 pounds. Isaiah Foskey could be a really fun option as well, but he'd be a really good Frank Clark replacement. And uh, I think that would be worth its weight in gold. So that is going to be the video. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know a lot of you guys are disappointed in the Peter Schrager mock draft. I'm not because he is just telling us what he hears and it's actually really valuable insight. So even if it might seem insane, the NFL is insane. So um, appreciate Peter Schrager for all he does. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys on the far side. Peace.